People across the country will be seeking comfort and faith this weekend at churches and temples and mosques. We have assembled a panel of religious leaders tonight. Joining us from New York is the Reverend Bob Edgar of the National Council of Churches. From Washington, Rabbi David Saperstein of the Religious Action Center for Reform Judaism. And also from Washington, Iman Muzamil Siddiqui, who helped lead the nation in prayer yesterday at the National Cathedral. Gentlemen, thank you all very much. Uh, Dr. Edgar, let me ask you at the beginning, we have a National Conference of Christians and Jews in this country working to have better understanding between those two groups. Should it now become a National Conference of Christians and Jews and Muslims? Absolutely, Tom. I've been pleased over the last few days as we've prayed for the victims and their families that religious leaders across the country, Jewish religious leaders, Muslim religious leaders, Christian Muslim leaders, have really come together to focus on healing the nation. And I think it's very appropriate for us to think across faith lines at this time. God is calling us to work collaboratively. Yesterday was a day of prayer, but we need more prayer in the days to come, more pastoral care and counseling, more help for those who are suffering, which is not going to be a short-term experience. I believe that many persons are suffering internally and the psychological impacts will occur over time. I would hope that all churches and temples and mosques would be open for comfort and care over the long haul and that we would work collaboratively together. And I see the signs of that in the last few days. Now, let me ask Iman Siddiqui, your faith is the fastest growing in the United States, and yet for most Americans, I think that it's fair to say, it remains for them the most mysterious of the religious experiences. How do we resolve that? How do we find a way to find common ground between Islam and the Muslim faith, obviously, and Judaism and Christianity in this country? There is a lot of common ground, Tom, uh, between Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. We share many things. We believe in the same God, Allah, Elohim, Eloh is the same being. We believe in the same prophets, uh, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and the prophet Muhammad. All of these prophets of God, we believe in them. The ethical and moral values are the same. It is very important that uh, our three faiths, we come together. The people of faith meet and have dialogue and discussion and see what are the grievances that we have against each other. I mean, Muslims should find out what are the grievances Jews have against Muslims, what are the grievances Christians have against Muslims. And in a similar way, Jews should stretch their hands and ask Muslims, and Christians stretch their hands and ask Jews and Muslims. All of us, we should do that. And we should stop the cycle of violence. The world is becoming very dangerous. We are living closer to each other. We are not like Muslims living in one place, Christians living in another place, Jews living in another place. You know, it was, there was a time when, when a Muslim can say, I have never seen a Jew, I have never seen a Christian in my life. There was a time when a Christian could say, I have never seen a Muslim in my life. But now we are living next to each other. It is very important that we have dialogue, we have discussion among ourselves. But Rabbi Saperstein, so much of the problem in this country is that we are buffeted by the shock waves that come from the Middle East, particularly the ongoing violence between Israel and the PLO. Well, that's true, but uh, there are a number of lessons that come to us uh, uh, out of the Middle East. One is uh, that we cannot stand by when any people are attacked here simply because of who they are. We Jews who have been the quintessential victims of group hatred over the centuries know the importance of standing up when people are targeted for their religion or ethnicity as we've seen in attacks on mosques and attacks on Arabs and Muslims. This attack was not about Israel. It was not about the Middle East conflict in the main. It was about a different vision of the world. It was an attack on America's fundamental commitment and values to democracy and freedom and tolerance and compassion and uh, pluralism. Uh, Israel represents those values. It is one of the reasons it has been attacked. Others across the globe have been attacked and now the globe needs to come together to resist this. It is not about Israel at this time, but Israel standing up to terrorism, keeping its cultural norms, <laughs> its civic life, its civil liberties, is a model of inspiration and hope to America that, that we can uh, well follow at this time to show how to defeat the goals of these terrorists. But in this country, should there be some kind of an extraordinary faith summit 
to have an ongoing dialogue in America at every level. Well, perhaps, but at this time, in every community across America, Muslims, Jews, Christians, Sikhs, Hindus, Buddhists are all gathering together. There have been interfaith services, Tom, in virtually every major community in American life today. I think what is happening at the local level where people live is at least as important as what would be accomplished by the idea of a national summit. And Iman Siddiqui, uh, how much of this do you think is based in race? Because after all, so many of your faithful are people who have slightly darker skin and they get identified almost instantly as Arab terrorists in some communities. It is very wrong to identify sim people because simply because of their race or because of their religion. We have to find out those who have committed the crime. It is not uh, right to simply because of somebody of different religion that that person is automatically becomes a suspect person or person has a different name. This is wrong. Uh, I think it's very important that people should find out who has committed the crime, not because of his color, not because of his race, not because of his religion, yeah. but because uh, the person is found guilty of that. But that's, this, my, this is, that's my point exactly. And should that be, uh, Dr. Edgar, a, a, a very important component in this effort to try to find some reconciliation in the spiritual community? Absolutely, Tom. Uh, it has, we're in the midst of uh, talking about faith-based institutions, and churches, synagogues, and mosques are the backbone of a civil society. It's not so much that we need a national summit. What we need is for the nation to meet in every church and in every mosque and synagogue and uh, work on learning about each other. Uh, we think that this is going to be a very difficult time, much like the time after Pearl Harbor when people of a different color or have a different accent, are going to be uh, under attack and suspicion. And we are a nation. We are one people under God. And I think it's important for us at this time to lift our spirits and bring hope in the midst of pain and light in the midst of darkness. And the churches and synagogues and mosques can be the very place where that takes place. The National Council of Churches and others have uh, formed an alliance with the Muslim community and the Jewish community and others. We think the next months should be a place where those uh, religious leaders go to their pulpits, go to their sanctuaries, and talk about reconciliation, talk about the pain that people are suffering, and learn about each other as people because we, again, are one nation called at this very tragic time to be one nation under God together in our efforts both to care for the victims and to respond to the tragedies that we face. Dr. Edgar, thank you very much. Rabbi Saperstein, thank you as well. And Iman Siddiqui, we, we do appreciate all of you coming in here tonight. We, do, thank we you. know that you have flocks to tend to, in a matter of speaking. Thank you.